Good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are and when you're watching this video, hello and welcome back to my channel. That is the most awkward opening I've ever done. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to go down a slightly preachy route, for which I apologise but you all need to listen to this, okay? C this week is for cervixes and I figured while we were down there we would also talk very quickly about contraception because I would like you all to be safe and I do not want anybody to have any nasties down below. That's all I'm saying. So very quickly, not quickly, not quickly at all, very preachily, we are going to begin with cervical smear tests. Now if you are my age, I'm 26 or slightly younger, you might have already had your first smear test because you get invited for smears at the age of 25. I think I had mine when I was 24 and a half because they start inviting earlier to get everybody done, I assume. The reason that we have smear tests and that we have the smear programme is to screen for cervical cancer. You're invited for your first smear at around the age of 24 and a half, 25 and you'll have them every three years. And lots of people are quite scared of this because somebody's going to be poking around all in your business but there is literally nothing to be scared of i'll tell you about mine shall i see i went in the nurse was very friendly you lie down on the bed i've worked in a gum clinic and i know that the people who are doing these things we see a lot a lot of different sizes shapes vaginas penises we see it all we 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 know, we, we don't care what you look like down below, I don't care if you're hairy down below, I don't care if your legs are hairy, if you want to shave and prepare down below, that's fine. But there is no need to be embarrassed because the people doing these tests literally see these bits of you and other people all day every day, that is their job. So there's no need to feel embarrassed or afraid, I know that a lot of you still will. They put a thing called a speculum inside you which is a little bit of plastic which just sort of opens you up on the inside so that you can get to your cervix. For anyone who doesn't know, although I would hope that most of you watching this would know, the cervix is the entrance to your womb and it lies at the top of your vagina. Where the vagina meets the womb, when you have a baby the cervix opens and lets the baby fly out. That's labour for you in one quick sentence. So they use the speculum to open up the vagina so you can get a good look at the cervix and then use a tiny little plastic implement to scrape some cells from the entrance to the cervix. And that's called a cervical broom, which I think, to be honest, I think calling it a cervical broom makes it seem less scary because the idea that someone's just brooming your cervix with a tiny little broom, it's, it is uncomfortable, I'm not going to lie, you will feel a little twinge, it will be uncomfortable, but once it's done, that gets sent off to the lab and they have a look to see if you have any precancerous cells or cancerous changes and that allows them if there is anything to worry about to contact you and to hopefully nip it in the bud at a really early stage. If you then need to go for any further investigation the next thing that normally happens is something called colposcopy. Um, again it's kind of awkward because you're going to be lying there legs akimbo on a table and they're going to be looking down your hoo-ha at your cervix. Colposcopy is a little bit more um what's the word? A little bit more involved it's basically looking with binoculars at the cervix and they put stains on and see if there's any cells that need to be removed and they can do something called a large loop excision which is you where they put anesthetic on and they remove the cells that are bad and send them off to the lab and all of this doesn't sound very nice does it but by getting your smear Hopefully you'll catch things early enough that you won't have to go any further into any operations or any chemotherapy, any radiotherapy and you can kind of, you know, you can literally ward it off at the door. It's literally a 10 minute appointment at the GP and you can prevent yourself from dying, genuinely. It's one of the best things in my opinion that girls aged 25 could be doing with their time and their vagina. You let girls. I'm not trying to be mean, I'm not trying to be harsh, but we let a lot of things go up there. A lot of unsavoury people. It's much better to have a nurse go up there with a little broom and take some cells and check that you're okay than to let 
a dodgy man that you met on a night out who bought you a kebab in the kebab shop on the way home go up there. You know what I'm saying? It's a nurse. Yes, it's embarrassing. Yes, you don't want to go, but just do it. There's, there's not even a question. You can ask me questions about it, but just do it. There's, just do it. I feel like we see pretty frequently on Facebook stories of people who are saying, oh, I'm so glad that I got my smear, or oh, I wish I got my smear earlier. And I think one that everybody knows about is Jade Goody. Now, it's generally assumed that she didn't go and get her smear, but she did actually go and get her smear. She was then too scared to go to any of the follow-up things, and she ended up as we know, dying of cancer of the cervix, which is really sad because the smear programme makes it, you know, relatively difficult to die of cervical cancer if you're getting your smears. And obviously there are exceptions and to those people who have cervical cancer and who always got their smears and, you know, I, this is not aimed at you. This is aimed at everybody that I know who is turning 25 who is not thinking about going to get her smears. Get your bloody smears. That's ba basically, I could just make five minute video of me saying, go and get your smear. Go and get your smear. Go and get your smear. Go to your follow-up appointments if you need them. Go and have your cervix broomed. Just go, go now. If you're watching this video and you've had a letter through about an appointment and you've been dragging your feet about it, make the goddamn appointment right now. Go and get your smear, it's much better to be safe than sorry and let us help you before it's too late. Okay? Okay. I feel like we got the point now. Get your smears! I feel like I need to chill out. So like I said, while we're down there talking about smears and the like, um, I thought I would very briefly talk to you about contraception because we all need to be using it. We don't want any nasties or any unwanted babies. First thing I'm gonna say is that there are lots of options for contraception, but the only thing that is gonna protect you from STIs is condoms. If you are a boy or a girl and you're sleeping with somebody and you don't know whether or not they've got anything dodgy going on down below and they've not been checked out, then you can't go wrong really by using a condom. Don't be scared. If the alternative is herpes or genital warts, then condom is definitely worth it that moment of awkwardness while you say oh let me just get a condom out herpes doesn't go away it comes and it goes genital warts doesn't go away once you got it it comes and it goes and you want to try and stop that from happening well i assume you want to try and stop that from happening you might not mind if you catch those things but i'm trying to encourage you not to catch those things because i don't imagine those things would be very nice to have and i've seen plenty of people who have had them and it ain't that nice. You don't want that. Nobody wants that. I don't want that. You don't want that. Use a condom. If a boy, if, well, it wouldn't be a man, would it? It would only be a boy that would say to you that they're not gonna have sex with you with a condom on, then you need to really reevaluate if you are meeting the right kind of men because I can't imagine there's many men who'd want to risk catching something either. And you might be very, very sure that you don't have anything. Very sure that he doesn't have anything. But you can never be too safe. I feel like this is just a preach. Get your smears. Use condoms with strangers. Or don't sleep with strangers at all. Use condoms with guys that you don't yet know the STI status of. And contraception-wise... Cervix condoms contraception is three C's. This is this is this this week we are going with the C's. Contraception. There are lots of options. I, as I said in one of my videos before, have a Mirena coil. Um, these are the options that you have. So there is abstinence, your choice. Condoms. The only thing that protects against nasty things as well as against sperm and babies. There is the pill, which I know a lot of people use. It's really good if you remember to take it every day. You can either have a combined pill, which is estrogen and progestogens, or you can have a mini pill, which is progestogen only. Um, there is also then the implant, which is just a little rod that goes in your arm. The Mirena coil, which is a hormone releasing coil that goes into in through your cervix, into your womb. Or there is the copper coil, which goes in the same way and instead of releasing hormones that just makes the environment in your womb very un 
favorable for growing a baby so it doesn't happen. Does that make sense? So there are plenty of options and you just need to work out what is best for you. And when I worked in the government clinic, they were kind of like, oh, we don't let anybody leave without a coil, like as a joke. And I was like, oh, okay, I better get a coil then. Um, <laughs> that's literally how it went down. My last day of working there, I had my coil fitted. And I can tell you, if I managed to have a coil fitted through my cervix by people that I knew and worked with, then you can go and have a stranger do a smear test on you or put a coil in you. The best thing to do really if you're thinking about contraceptive options is to think, would I remember to take a pill every single day? I think that's the first step. And some people can, some people can't, and that's fine. If you're gonna remember to take a pill every day, then the pill is fine. Go and speak to your doctor and say, I want to start on the pill. If you're not remembering it to take it every day, then you need to think about something a little bit more long-term, like the implant or a coil, and both of those things work really well. Um, there are side effects, obviously, as there are with everything. The implant can make you gain weight, it doesn't always. The same with the depo injection, which is an injection into your bottom every three months, which frankly, I don't know why anybody would choose that over a coil. And then there's coils, obviously. There are risks involved with having a coil. There's a risk that the coil could perforate. There's a risk that um, it won't work and you might still get pregnant regardless. The same with all contraception, really. But it's definitely something worth thinking about. And I genuinely believe if you are 16, 17, yes, it will hurt to have a coil put in. It hurts. They clamp, they put a little holding thing on your cervix to hold it in place so they can put it in, and it hurts. It feels like all your period pain has just come at once. And then they put a coil in, and they don't have to replace it for five years, and you might not have periods as a bonus. Like, I think I've had, in the six or seven months I've had my coil, I've had three days where I've bled and you know then that you're protected for five years. So I'm recommending coils. Today, the recommendations for today, condoms, cervical smears, contraception, coils. Just remember those things. And if anyone has any questions about contraception, then please go to your local gum clinic, go and see your GP. You can message me, but I can't obviously give you proper doctor advice, just generic friendly advice. Um, you'll know my advice anyway, wear a condom, get a coil, have your smears. I'll see you really soon guys and if anyone has any questions about contraception or coils or smear tests then please let me know and I'll make another video answering your cues and have a lovely day. It was lovely to catch up with you again and hopefully I'm protecting you from genital warts and herpes and cervical cancer and babies that you don't want. And I need to stop talking now. Bye guys! But we let plenty there's a man just running past my house, literally running, holding what looks like a tree. He stopped running now. His trousers are falling down, so he's had to stop. To all the muscle. An update on the people running past the window. The person whose trousers had fallen down had cut has come back. And now there's another man and they're dragging a massive pile of logs along with a bit of string. You could see this, I could show you this. What are you doing? Where are you going with the logs? Where did you get them from? The, the person pulling the, uh, the... Can you see him? He's got all the way up there now. Are you still watching this and you've not booked your smear test yet? Go book your smear test. Book your smear test!